All right. Yay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our yin yoga class. As always, I'm so excited to be here with all of you. Today for props, I'm gonna have you grab either a strap or maybe just like a regular towel if you don't have a strap. And I always recommend maybe like a pillow or a blanket of some kind. We might also want like tea or water and we'll begin in just a moment. Today, the section I'm gonna have for you is gonna be some three, four and five minute holds. And I'm gonna give you very specifically just a 30 minute practice today. Okay, I want you to come to a seated space. And whenever we check in, no matter what style we're practicing, I always have us noticing things like, how does the body feel, right? How do the joints feel? How has that digestive realm been? And of course, how have we been sleeping? Because so much of what I teach you is all around that triangle realm of mental health, gut digestive, and sleep. And when we practice yin, we're going to watch how this whole practice creates a domino effect of health, but it begins often with yin yoga. So we come to seated and we lengthen the spine. We're gonna draw up of the crown of the head. And just take a moment to maybe soften the face. We can close the eyes, but we don't have to. And we're noticing how we feel as we begin. And then we bring the hands to the heart and we set our intentions and we dedicate our practice. And we remember that all the things that we do, all the things that we say, all the energetic arrows that we shoot, they matter and they have big impact inside of us and all around us. Let's very gently release the hands. We can slowly open the eyes if they're closed, good. And let's begin our practice. We're just gonna be coming to child's pose to begin. So we might actually move the props away. And in our child's pose variation, I'm gonna actually give you three minutes here. And there are two different ways to do this. So you might choose to have your knees together or you might choose to have the knees apart. If we try it with the knees together and we hinge forward, if we feel a kind of pinching in the hip, that might be the body saying it's better to have the knees wider. Yeah, the hands can go forward or the hands can go back. So yeah, whatever feels right for your body. And I want you to find that very first stretch. And let's do, yeah, just three minutes there. As we come to this first shape, keep the face soft. I want you to notice where you feel the most sensation. We might feel a lot of stretch in the back. We might even feel stretch like in the top of the foot. And let's continue to breathe and to let go. Okay, I'm breathing here, the heartbeat and the breath will begin to slow. The yin style actually brings our body into what we call the parasympathetic. And that's the chill side. It's all the rest and the digest. Yeah, let's keep breathing.
And let's keep the face soft and notice that while we're getting probably stretch in the back body, the chances are good that we're also getting some really nice massage in the belly. And this assists in detox and cleansing things like your liver, your gallbladder, your kidneys. And it does so with this gentle compression. But remember, a lot of our cleansing actually happens when we're sleeping. So by practicing yin and allowing the body rest, a lot of what we're doing is not just the cleansing here, but the cleansing that will happen when we're sleeping. Yeah, just keep breathing. There you go, we exhale super slow. Yeah, that's three minutes. We take our time and anything at all that we want in between, it might be cat cow, yeah, down dog, anything that feels right. And we might feel like clicking, popping, movement. We're gonna notice all of that. We're looking at a little bit of each of our target areas. And like I mentioned, we're intentionally having just a 30 minute class. So this allows us to look at a little bit of everything. I want you to do this. I want you to come to seated and taking the legs wide, we're gonna check out what we call dragonfly. And we might feel this primarily on the inner leg, adductor group, groin, but you might also feel it in the back. And we're gonna note that any props that you want, you might be putting something in front. Remember the key is that we're gonna hold it for a long period of time. So we're gonna do five minutes here. And you might just do like a 10% stretch. Some of you might be able to go really far into this, but remember, we're not gonna be just working the muscles. After a couple of minutes, it moves us into the fascia and the connective tissue. So I always recommend go slow and yeah, just piece at a time. Okay, drag and fly, five minutes. Remember that with yin, it's all about what it feels like and it doesn't matter what it looks like. In yin we say that the bones and the skeleton will ultimately determine the yoga poses that we are able to do. And this pose, this shape is a really good example because I've seen people that have never done yoga in their lives and they can like put their feet behind their head and they have really wide dragonfly but I've also seen people that have done yoga for 40 years and their legs don't open that wide. And that's because a lot of it has to do with the bones. So remember when we see a shape, like for example, in you know, a wide split or something, about 70% of it is bone. So it helps us to understand more about what's maybe even available to the body. Let's keep breathing. Remember that we're always revealing truth. And with yin, when we know that some pieces might not work as well as others, it can change how we practice yoga. If we're not concerned about what it looks like, if we're focusing on what it feels like, it can change everything. So just go slow. Yeah, keep breathing. Breathing, keep the face soft. As you're breathing here, remember you can round the back. Even just tucking the chin could produce a different stretch. Let's go slow.
to face soft and gently observe where the mind is. If we're in the past, or the future, if we're present. And I know it can be challenging not to judge, but know that a lot of what we need is space and time to process. And that's a lot of what yin provides. That's really why it works so well for removing insomnia, because at times it's boring. And we are creating a container of space. Let's keep breathing. Keep breathing, keep letting go. In these moments when it's intense, remember this is when we are cleansing the body, the mind, the soul, removing the things that we no longer need. Very, very good. Now we release, yeah. Take it super, super slow. Yeah, take your time. Especially when yin is new, it can be surprising how intense it is because at times it looks like we're not doing very much. We joke that it's the easiest, hardest thing in the world, right? Yeah, go slow. Anything that we want in between. Today, we're looking at a bunch of different target areas. And so in the next one, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna actually be creating stretch, maybe in the back body, but possibly in the hamstrings. And we're thinking about the large muscles and the back of the leg. Now, in general, we can, of course, you know, do our poses pretty much in any order we like. We might find that a certain order you know, works better for us, but I will often have us do the hamstring work before I have us do the front body, just so that we don't get cramping in the hamstring when we move to the quads. So what we're gonna do on this one, you might grab that towel or strap because what you're gonna do is have both the legs forward and we might be using the strap. Now I'm gonna take a moment here to explain something just really quickly, cause it can matter. If your feet are forward, this is something I want you to know. They may stay straight up, but they may naturally kind of fall out and maybe one is different than the other. The rotation can come from the hip but there's also a rotation that can come from the inner leg and the tibia. So let's say that when you come to this pose, the feet open really, really wide. But then when you come to this one, they don't open wide. That can be the body telling me that possibly this rotation is not as much happening as the one happening here. And for example, um, like in the dance world that I grew up in, that could really affect the knee because you know if the rotation doesn't come from the hip, right? that could really affect the knee. So we just get to know more about what is happening in the body. Maybe there's mobility in both of these areas. Maybe it's not in either, maybe it's different left and right. So we get to know all these things. Again, with both the legs forward, listen to your own body. Some of you who are really deep in this pose, some of my advanced students, you might grab your props and intentionally create some rounding then you'll feel it more in the back if you want to not have as much in the hamstring. So yeah, whatever you're working on, I'm going to again, give us five full minutes here. Okay, so let's take those legs forward. Yeah, any props that you want. We might even just be kind of gently leaning forward. And let's do five minutes here. This is caterpillar pose. Good, yeah, just find that very, very first stretch. As we're breathing here, I want us to remember that 
These practices work beyond just stretching the muscle and we are moving into those denser tissues. Even if we exercise a lot, we tend to do what we call like yang practice, which is primarily focusing on the muscles, which get a lot of blood flow and they open quickly and recoil fast. But there are other tissues in the body and things like fascia that are more like cobweb. They take longer to open, longer to release. And it can also take time to actually heat and melt what we call the gel sol in the fascia. And so we're really using our own body to heal our body. But a lot of it is, it takes time. And even if we, again, practice yoga or do other kinds of practices, they tend to be more in that yang category. And so much of what we could need is in the yin. And here's why. Imagine the muscle, but imagine like wrapped around it, you have that fascia. And if we're only doing the yang exercise, then we're only going to work the muscle. But once you start doing yin and you create that pull and that micro stretch in those dense tissues, then you actually change the container for the muscle. And we feel like there's this tremendous change even after one round of yin, because there is, because there is space created and it's not just you know, happening in your joint because you've created more hyaluronic acid and there's mobility, but you have actually produced a different kind of container for the muscle. You have provided space. So, so much of it is allowing space, the body, for the mind. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. Notice where you feel the most sensation. Keep letting go, observe details. Excellent, now release, yeah. Take it super, super slow and remember that we might go all the way onto the back. We might need just a moment. Yeah, whatever feels right. We might feel clicking, popping movement, notice all of it. And again, we're using the body to heal the body, which is really a phenomenal thing that this practice, it is so basic. And while the props are wonderful to have, I want you all to remember that so much of what you need is yourself. And by having these simple tools, awareness of the neurobiology of sleep, awareness of yin yoga, 
an awareness of the gut, we can transform our lives. But a lot of it is we just have to have the tools. So remember that this basic stretching, which is really what it is, stemming from this beautiful ancient Kung Fu practice. We are so lucky to have this, but remember in many ways, it is that basic stretching. In our traditional Kung Fu realm, we would have done like the stretching, the yin yoga, and then like waited 30 minutes. And then you would have done like the stances and the yang practice. So also remember that yin in itself is incomplete. Yang in itself is incomplete. We're all looking for harmony. So we're always looking for what works. Now, what I want us to do, we're going into the front side of the body. Technically, that's the yin side of the body, right? Yang would be the back. And what we're going to do is we're going to stretch the quad, hip flexor. Yeah, maybe grab a um, pillow or blanket. I really want you to protect the knee. Now, I'm going to have my right leg forward and my left knee is down. And I'm going to show you from a couple of different angles, because remember, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It's all about what does it feel like? Some of you are going to lift like almost out of it. Maybe you're going to feel it here, maybe through the quad. Sometimes we get some stretch here. Maybe the hands are going to come down. Maybe you want to walk the foot out. I think a lot of us are finding that this can be a better variation or even like dropping the hands down. So yeah, whatever we are working on and let's find that very first stretch. So, yep, very gentle. Let's take the right leg forward. I'm gonna give us three in this one. So find that very first stretch, right leg forward lunge and breathing here. The knee can go past the ankle. Um, every body is different. We're going to learn a great deal about our own body and the details, the differences left and right. When we practice together often, you get to hear my same boring stories. And so many of my advanced students, you know already that part of why we time this practice is because we've seen in data and this is not just from yoga, but um, from multiple con control studies, looking at any type of athletic where we do something left and right. What we have found is that if we don't time it, then whatever side we do first, we do way longer because your brain is so advanced. Your right brain is controlling the left body and left brain is controlling the right body and separating the brains, right, is the corpus callosum. It's passing info. But what we have found is that you're all very smart and your brains like to cheat. And when we move from the first side to the second, that info is passed very quickly. And we never spend as long on the second side unless we time it. So also note that when we move things left and right, you know, one side than the other, it's really common that the second side will just feel longer. So getting to know more about the body and seeing all of these details. Uh, just keep breathing. The face soft. Keep breathing. Excellent, that's three, I want you to release, take it super slow. Yeah, feel that rebound and observe. Okay. 
yoga at its roots believes that anybody can attain enlightenment, but a lot of what we need is we need a path. We need a practice. And yin can provide a really good root to kind of anchor because like I mentioned, in itself, it's incomplete. We have to find harmony. And yin encourages us to combine yin and yang, right? To find harmony. That's what it's all about. Now we move to the second side. Let's see if this one's different. Maybe one is a little bit easier or more challenging. Okay, so take that left leg forward. And now we have that right knee down. Yeah, and I want you to just find that very first stretch and we'll do three minutes here. Good. Notice details. Is this one in any way different? It's actually pretty common that when we're right arm dominant, we tend to stand more on the left leg to free the right arm. So it's actually common that the front right hip is tighter just in the way that we tend to distribute weight if we're right arm dominant. So notice maybe it's different. My lefties in general are kind of more ambidextrous, but we're noticing details about the body Keep breathing. Keep breathing. We create space. So we process here on the mat. And then when we lay down to sleep, we will sleep well. Because what we're finding, what our data shows us is that insomnia happens and we don't have enough time to process awake. So we create space. Let's keep breathing. Very, very good. Now we've released, yeah, take it super, super slow and feel. I know yin can be challenging, but I promise it will be worth it. Good, just go very, very slowly. Yeah. We can move our props away. Good. Now what I'm gonna have us do, I'm gonna have us very gently come on to the back. And I will, of course, give us um, some time in Shavasana because Shavasana really is our most important pose. And it might seem like, oh, it's not a pose, but really it is a pose. It was actually like the 12th pose invented ever in yoga. And as you make your way to Shavasana, know this, that yoga started like this. And for 500 years, this was all there was. But then originally after the 500 years of meditation, 12 poses arrived, really basic and looked a lot like yin. And one of those first shapes was Shavasana. So as you come to that space, you're coming onto the back and you could have the feet as wide as the mat. Yeah, you could have the palms up, get really comfortable, get really warm. 
And I'm gonna give you a few minutes there. And yeah, you might close the eyes if it's comfortable, but let it be your own. Remember that that's a really important part of our practice is that we really allow it to be our own practice. Okay, Shavasana, a couple minutes. Breathing, we're allowing the body to become as heavy as possible. And then very slowly begin to ground back into yourself. You can move the fingers and the toes, really gentle micro movements, tiny, tiny movement in the neck and head as we awaken the body. And when we're ready, you can roll to one side. We might keep the eyes closed, but always let it be your own. We'll all eventually press ourselves back up. Yeah, take your time. And as we return to this seated space, we're noticing how we feel. We notice physical, mental, emotional. We check in with everything. And I want you to also notice how you sleep tonight. Notice the next couple of days, how our digestive realm, how our sleep is, noticing those details. Now let's bring the hands very, very gently to the heart. Let us remember 
our intentions, our dedications. Let us remember all of the reasons that we practice yoga. And let us remember that the things that we do and the things that we say and the energetic arrows that we shoot, they matter. They have big impact inside of us and all around us. May the practices of yoga and meditation make us better in every way. Thank you all so much for being here. I am so grateful to all of you. Be sure to comment, subscribe, like, and you can check out my website, sarasvatihewitt.com. You can also uh, find music through me, Sarasvati Hewitt on Spotify, and you can connect with me on Facebook and Instagram. If you go to my website, you can see where live classes are available every single day and also where I will have events and um, classes that are happening in person currently in Portland, Oregon. Thank you all so much. I'm very grateful for all of you. Thank you.